Hello everyone, welcome to my channel and in today's video, I'm going to discuss vaccinations. So vaccination is a very important part of the periodic section of the exam. And it's also a cause of a lot of anxiety among the candidates because they're not sure of uh, how much information they're expected to know about a vaccination or immunizations in the UK. So in this video, I'm going to give you an insight of the immunization schedule and other important information about vaccinations that you need to keep uh, at the back of your mind in case you get an anxious parent calling you or coming to an appointment um, asking different questions because they are anxious um, that their two month old or four month old or one year old is going to uh, get their vaccinations and they have read something on the internet or they have heard something from other parents or celebrities or so or something like that and they have uh, called you or arranged an appointment to discuss their worries okay so first of all Let's take a look at the immunization schedule in the UK, okay? Because um, every country has a different immunization schedule, and I'm sure you uh, you would you would be knowing um, the immunization schedule in your country, but in UK the immunization schedule is going to be a bit different. So, uh, okay. So first of all, um, the first immunization happened at two months of age, okay? Then. We have immunization at three months, then four months, then one year, and three years. Okay, so five sets of immunization. There are other immunizations as well at the age of 12 to 14 years and a few other a few other um, vaccinations, but I have listed the important ones here. Um, so let's just discuss them uh, at the moment. So there are five sets of immunization at five different ages, two months, three months, four months, one year, and three years. Okay, so first of all, we have this uh, immunization, which is six in one, and six in one vaccine is given at the age of two months, then three months, then four months. Okay, I have uh, written different vaccinations in different color pen so that it's easier for you to memorize. So six in one vaccine is at the age of two months, then three months, and then four months. Okay, then we have rotavirus. Rotavirus is actually a vaccine against diarrhea. So it's given at the age of two months and then three months, okay? So you have rota one at the age of two months and rota two at the age of three months. Then we have meningitis B vaccination, which is given at the age of two months, then four months, then one year. So meningitis B is two, four, and one, okay? Then we have the MMR vaccination. So MMR vaccine is given at the age of one year and then three years. So three years is the preschool children, okay? So uh, MMR at the age of one year and then three year. Um, then we have pneumococcal vaccination. Pneumococcal vaccination, PCV1, it's given at the age of three months and PCV2 is given at the age of uh, one year. So uh, pneumococcal vaccination is at the age of three months and one year, okay? Then we have an additional vaccine uh, against men meningitis C and Haemophilus influenza B, which is given at the age of one year. Um, so this is basically your uh, major important vaccinations in the UK immunization schedule. So the six in one vaccine, it basically contain, um, it basically contain immunization against six different diseases. So DPT, which is diphtheria, pertussis, and tetanus, and then polio, Haemophilus influenza B, and hepatitis B, okay? so it gives immunization against three, these uh, six diseases, diphtheria, tetanus, pertussis, polio, Haemophilus influenza B, and hepatitis B. And then you have an additional vac uh, vaccination, additional dose of vaccine against Haemophilus influenza B at the age of one year as well, okay? Which is not a part of six and one. So, yeah, so this was about your immunization schedule. Now you need to know a few contraindication to... Uh, vaccines because you might be tested on your ability to know when to give the vaccine and when to postpone it or when to avoid it altogether, okay? So uh, you are going to postpone the vaccination if the child is ill with fever, okay? You don't give vaccination to a child who is acutely febrile, okay? Uh, you are going to avoid all the live vaccines like MMR, like oral polio. Uh, so in UK, um, the polio, the polio vaccine, which is given is usually the injectable one, which is a part of uh, six in one. 
Uh, so oral polio is not given um, normally, uh, but just uh, for the purpose of um, uh, for the purpose of the exam, you just keep in mind that oral polio is also not given um, in any child who is uh, immunocompromised. Okay, so all the live vaccine we are going to avoid in immunocompromised children it include MMR, uh, varicella, uh, nasal uh, flu vaccines, and also the um, oral polio one. Okay. If the child is known to have an anaphylactic reaction to the vaccines, okay, to any specific vaccine, the child is known to have an anaphylactic reaction to the first dose of a vaccine, then we are going to avoid uh, the next dose. Okay. Uh, now, regarding flu vaccine, flu vaccine contain um, some component of eggs. So, patients who are allergic to eggs can, can you know, they can have... Um, sort of severe allergic reaction to flu vaccine. So what we are going to do is we are going to um, use the egg-free alternative in some uh, in such patients, okay? Uh, also, MMR vaccine also contain uh, some part of egg component, but the egg component in MMR vaccine is from chick embryo and it does not trigger allergic reaction. So in case you have a very curious, patient, uh, very curious parent um, coming to you and, uh, and saying, you know, I read this on the internet that MMR vaccine also contain um, egg component and uh, my child is allergic to eggs. So you can tell them that the MMR component, that the egg component in the MMR vaccine is not known to trigger allergic reaction because it is taken from a chick embryo. Okay, so we can safely give it to allergic patients. Okay, so these were some contraindication to vaccines. Then uh, there are some possible side effects that you are expected to know. So um, there are some local side effects like uh, swelling, redness, and formation of a lump. And it's going to be uh, there for at least two to three days and then it will subside, okay? Uh, the child can also have a mild fever or rash with the vaccine, and sometimes they can have uh, some allergic reactions, and the allergic reaction can be um, very severe, uh, like anaphylaxis, but it's really rare. So anaphylaxis is very rare, um, but still, uh, you know, you need to tell the parent that uh, even if the child develops anaphylaxis to the first dose of vaccine, we are totally prepared to deal with it. It's very rare but we have all the safety mechanism in place and we will we will have our emergency uh, card ready and we'll be able to deal with any anaphylaxis if it happens, okay? All right, so let's talk about the risk versus benefit of vaccinations because you might need to uh, give the risk versus benefit profile of vaccines in order to convince a parent to uh, vaccinate their uh, child, okay? So first of all, what are the benefits of vaccination? Why should someone vaccinate their kid, okay? Because vaccines prevent severe and potentially life-threatening diseases, okay? The second point is they maintain the er eradication of diseases like polio that have killed and disabled millions and millions of children in the past. The third point is um, when you vaccinate your child, you won't need to worry about different diseases endemic to different areas when you are traveling, okay? So if your child is not vaccinated, and even if they grow up and they travel to different countries where some diseases are not eradicated, like for example, polio, or if they get in contact with someone who has um, chicken pox and they're not vaccinated, then they are going to get this disease. Uh, even measles, they can get in adulthood. And when these childhood diseases like um, uh, varicella or measles, when they happen in adulthood, they are much, much more severe and potentially life-threatening, okay? Uh, so this is your third point. And the fourth point is that vaccines are extremely safe and they are proven to be safe by animal trials and then human trials, extensive clinical trials, and they are continuously monitored by the authorities as well, okay? Then risks, so uh, like any other medication, vaccines can have some side effects like local side effects or mild fever, rash, and sometimes allergic reaction, but most of the side effects are mild and they only last for one, to one or two days. So in the case of vaccination, the risks are almost negligible, very mild, and the benefits clearly outweigh the risks. Okay, so this was all about um, vaccination. 
um i hope it was helpful i will see you soon in the next video and if you like my videos then please uh, leave a comment um subscribe and share my videos and help my channel grow thank you